Hi everyone, today I'm going to be working in watercolour and if you've seen previous videos then you'll have seen me do some outline work with watercolour marker and that's what I've got on the paper at the moment in purple so I've got the outline of the pig that we're going to be doing today but this is actually the first time I think in about 30 years that I've actually used normal watercolour paint with a brush so a nice little experiment for me and, and I hope uh, you'll get something from it as well. Now, as you can see, I've got this pig outlined in rather strong purple line and I wouldn't normally use for watercolour. I wouldn't normally use or expect to use, I should say, uh, a line of such a strong colour. And I've done that predominantly so that it shows up really well on this video. Um, conventional wisdom would say to use a fainter colour, perhaps some light pencil. Um, you know, or a lighter colour of, of watercolour paint. But there's my pig established on the paper and you can see I've just put in a very thin layer of blue in the background and now still with that blue on my brush uh, I'm also running that over the watercolour marker lines so I'm getting kind of a bluey purple now and I'm beginning to move that across the surface of the pig and notice that I'm curving my brush strokes when I did the belly of the pig to help suggest that form. And, you know, I found in recent times, as I said, I have used marker colour, I have used watercolour marker, I should say, fairly recently. And I like moving the paint around with, with a damp brush just to quickly establish light and dark. So I thought I would start this particular pig study in the same way. And then in just a moment, I'll come in with the conventional watercolours on top. So the light is coming in from the left, so we can see deeper shadows on the right hand side of this pig. And I'm leaving the watercolour paper that I'm using untouched to, estab to establish a sense of light on the left hand side of the head and on the upper back. So now I'm coming in with the conventional watercolour paint on a brush, fairly watery mix. And you can see I'm using some blue on top of this mauve colour that I put down originally further establishing the shadows. So traditional watercolour painting is all about translucency of the layers and letting one colour show through another. Generally speaking conventional wisdom says to work from light to dark. So although I'm putting in shadows I'm doing it, doing it in a fairly gentle way. And then if we need to make those shadows stronger work with darker tones we can add the darker layers on top. Now what I'm doing here is just taking some of that same shadow colour and putting it next to the pig in the background in order to improve the contrast between the parts of the pig that are light and the background. So I'm putting a dark colour in the background next to the lightest parts of the pig. And then after that, I've moved on to some cast shadow on the ground as well. Now, notice I haven't drawn the feet of this pig at all. So the idea is that uh, his trotters are kind of buried in amongst the grass and the dirt. Next up is uh, some yellow. And I'm putting that down as just pure yellow on top of the uncoated paper. But where that goes over the top of the blue, then we'll get some hints of green in there as well. So we're beginning to establish the kind of greenery of the field that the pig is standing on. So one of the things I'd forgotten about using watercolour is just how quickly you can, you know, put great swathes of colour across the page. Um, I'd also forgotten how much it's about not only controlling the paint, but controlling the water content as well. So, for example, you can see that as I'm putting this darker browny shadow colour on, I've got some little bubbles there uh, in the paint. And, you know, that's not ideally what you want. There's a danger of kind of ring marks or tide marks forming, kind of a mottled effect forming as the paint dries. 
So that's something I need to work on. I think in this particular case, I do get away with it reasonably well. Uh, it, it does dry fairly evenly, but we need to be careful when using watercolour not to overwet the paper and not to use too much water in the paint. But this pig is starting to take shape now. Early on we established some light and dark. And now by adding the other colours in the shadow, remember we've got the mauve, the sort of purpley colour, we've got the blue of the shadow and now some browns. And so, you know, it's starting to reflect a little bit more of the of reality where, you know, you've got these multiple tones and colours within shadows. And I just used a clean wet brush there just to soften some of the edges of those shadows. Adding a little bit more green to the field. So I'd put down the blue and then the yellow. And now with the green on top, it's quite a quick way of establishing a wide range of subtly varying colours and tones. Now that rear leg on the left, I'd hardly put any paint on that, I realised. So I just uh, just took, just spread some of the paint I'd put down with the original marker line just to push that uh, rear leg on the left there back into shadow. Some darker cast shadows now. And as I'm doing this, I'm also partly hiding the bottom of the pig's legs. So as I said, the, the idea is that the, the trotters themselves are kind of buried in the in the deep grass or the deep earth that he's standing in. So this is obviously quite a quick painting, so there's not too much time for high levels of detail. So what I plan on doing for this one, or what I will do, is I'll keep things very loose, but then we'll, we will add some extra detail to the head and face just to provide the painting with a fo focal point, really. Now, if you look along the top edge of the, the pig's back, you can see I've got that quite hard line of, of mauve watercolour marker. And that's not the way I would normally treat this. As I said, I, I use those strong lines so they show up clearly on the video. But if I was doing this in a non-demonstration setting, I would make that edge much softer. And in fact, that's what I'm attempting to do now. I'm kind of bring, coming in with a, a slightly darker blue, a little bit of a time jump there, and I've zoomed in so you can see a bit better. But what I did was darken the blue in the background on the left. And as I was doing that, and, I, and what I'm continuing to do now, is I'm just coming in with a damp brush to just soften that mauve marker pen a little bit. But even now, if I was doing this uh, in a non-demonstration setting, that top edge would be much, much softer, even, st even than it is now. So I've switched brushes now. Now, if you've seen my acrylic painting demos, I often use a flat brush, and I didn't do that uh, very much at all for this painting so far. In fact, I used a, a big round brush. And the reason for that is when working with watercolour, uh, they hold a lot more water, a lot more paint. So those sort of bulbous round brushes, which come to a fine point, but are quite big brushes, they're really efficient to use. You can get a, a very wide brush stroke, but you can also work in detail as well and get a nice thin line especially when you're using watercolour paint, very fluid paint. But now for the detailed, the more detailed shadows, I've switched to a smaller round brush and I've just added some kind of browny shadows to the, the depths of the ears. And continuing with that same colour, we can just begin to indicate the nostrils on the pig's snout. Some shadows on the mouth and chin. And then I'll just, uh, in just a moment, what I'll do is pop in just a couple of little dots to put in the positions of the eyes. But before we get to that, a few deeper shadows in the creases of the flesh and where there are dark patches on the legs. And here, just a little touch of colour on the right and another little touch of colour on the left, just to put in the positions of the pig's eyes. 
And so what I thought I would do with this one, as you can see, I've switched back now to the watercolour marker pen. So I let the paint dry. And I'm coming in now with the watercolour marker pen just to do a little bit of detailed work. Now, I normally use the brush tip and I very rarely use black. But in this case, I am using the black marker just to put in the very darkest areas on the eyes and the nostrils of the pig there. And I normally use the brush tip of these markers. They're double tipped. One end has a flexible brush tip and the end I'm using now has a fine line marker. But for this particular case, it's quite a small painting. And these are small little details, just little touches of black. And having put in those two or three, four touches of black, I've now switched back to Prussian blue, again using the fine line marker, just to put in some more detailed lines, but not to have the shadows be too harsh against the rather delicate purples and blues and browns I've used across the majority of the painting. I didn't want to use too much black for the final details. That's why I've switched to the blue. So I'm adding some line work now on top of the pig's head. And this is a quite a nice little technique actually to put down very soft washes of colour and then work over the top of those with rather more controlled lines. So you can see the, the different layers that have gone into creating the painting. Creates a little bit of a sense of movement. And notice on the outline of that ear on the right there, I didn't go all the way around with the blue. I've left some of those browns and purples showing through deliberately. So even at this later stage, I'm just selectively using a colour to, to pick out areas of shadow or just define a line a little bit more where I feel a bit more definition is required. So on that left ear, had I done rather a better job, I would have actually left the very top edge of that left ear uh, unpainted, so it was catching the light more than it is. Much like the left cheek of the of the pig's face there, and, and the left eye, that really feels like it's bathed in light. And the top of the left ear, that should be the same, as should the very top tip of the right ear. But, you know, that's the nature of watercolour. It's, it's spontaneous, but quite unforgiving. So you've got to kind of go with the flow, uh, no pun intended, a little bit. So there we go, we've added some detail to the pig's head and face, so hopefully that brings a bit of focus to the painting. And that's pretty much it for this quick little study of painting a pig in watercolour. So if you have any questions, then please remember to hit me up in the comments below. Please press the like button if you like the video. And if you're new here, please remember to subscribe to the channel. But in the meantime, I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of the Sunday Art Show. Thank you very much for watching.